So, the next little thing in the inspector is the button. So this is the value of when the button is turned on, and then the value of when the button is turned off. I'm a 1 now! I'm a 0. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, if we are talking CC language, you know, like with CC MIDI controllers, do you know how with like MIDI messaging everything goes up to 127? So it goes from 0 to 127. When you're using a button, you have to make sure you use 127 for CC messages. So it means when you press the button, it sends the signal to Ableton that it's 127. That's the value of the button. Uh, for now, let's do it for 1. Now, mode is how the button reacts. So toggle means you press it once, stays on, you press it again, it turns off. Push, you hold it, you press it and hold, it'll stay on, but as soon as you let go of the mouse, it will turn off. So push, turn off, push, turn off. And then tap is literally just one button. Like if I try and press and hold, it does not work. It does not like it. See, if I show it here, I'm holding the button, but nothing's happening. So, double tap means it will only interact with you when you double tap it. This is very useful for the slider, the double tap button, which I'll show you later. Value. This is like, this is hard for me to explain because I haven't really used it in many situations yet. But the main situation I've used it for is default. I'll show you, I'll show you more about the value in the slider. It'll make more sense in the slider. Okay, now the juicy part. This is very juicy. So, this is very important. Um, the address, pre-args, type tags, decimal, target, ignore default, bypass. The only thing you need to concern yourself with is the address, pre-args, which I don't know exactly what that means, and target. Those three are the only things you need to worry about. Those three. So I'm just going to get up the manual as well because it's very useful but there's pretty much two addresses you need to worry about notes I mean sorry note note it's very that's very important to make sure you get that right note for MIDI notes like keyboard notes like C D you know the musical theory stuff and control and control stands for CC so CC messages which is the 127 thing I was talking about before the main website is very useful that's what I tried to use but the main thing you need to know is here we go Pre-args for MIDI channel 1 and note 60, which stands for C4. Um, so, there's control. So, it gives you information about how to utilize it. And it gives you an example, which is really useful. Really, really useful. Um, and the same thing with this one, note. So those two are the main ones. So if you want more information on it, I highly recommend Open Stage Control documentation on MIDI messages. Okay. So we've got note and control. Now the pre-args are what it was kind of described before. It's talking about which MIDI channel. So like I said before, there's 16 MIDI channels usually. So let's just do MIDI channel 1. And... This is where you select wh what's being sent exactly. So in control, 
we have I think there's like 127 potential oh, I don't really know what the word the exact word is but it's outlets let's just use outlets so I want to use the tenth outlet of 127 there's like 127 outlets and the range is from 1 to 127 I don't know if that's confusing or not so if I use, let's use the same example. If I use one, right, like 160, then it's MIDI channel one and the 60th outlet. And what that means is when I say this note, when I say note, that means it's sending a message to the first MIDI channel and it's the 60th note, which is apparently C4, I think from what I remember. All right. Whew. And the last thing you want to do is target. So the target is here. Remember? So we specified Ableton and Kiki. And the way you want to specify your target. So let's do Ableton first. MIDI. MIDI. In the lower, lower case. Colon. And Abletron with a capital A because we wrote it with a capital A. And now we should have messages sending to Ableton, Abletron or Ableton. So let's have a look. Ah, do you see that little yellow thing at the top right? And you even see it. Uh, you can even see it there, right there. Now, do you see how the mini value is really low? I think it has something to do with this. So if I change it to 127, which is the maximum, see how now it's sending the maximum amount of velocity. And if I change it back to one, It'll just send, uh, it'll send nothing. I mean, there's the tiniest bit. Great! We're doing it. Now, if I select MIDI, and I say I select, let's use this one. No, let's use the on and off switch. And I press the button. I press this button. Aha, there you go. It's C3, that's what it is. Note C3. Now what happens when I change this button to control? Now it's changed it to MIDI channel 1, CC, control, 60. Huzzah! So now, um, now that is controlled. Well, it should be. Let's change it to, uh, let's change it to, whoops, toggle. Well, isn't that great? For some reason, I'm confused. There we go. Turns it on, turns it off, turns it off, turn it off. And I don't understand. Look. Weird. I don't understand why that's doing that. But now it's doing it fine. That's bizarre. I don't understand that. Great! So that is uh, the button. Dare I even show you the slider? That was a lot of information. Uh, let's let's just do the slider very quickly. How about that? So the slider, when I say very quickly, I wonder how that long that's going to be. Sorry, fader. That's what it is. Fader. So pretty much, 
Everything that I talked about before regarding geometry is exactly the same. Everything about sty uh, style is pretty much exactly the same, except for these little things where you can change the knob size. You can change the horizontal, so that means it can be horizontal instead. Let's change it back, actually. And... Pips? What the... I don't know what Pips is. Dash changes the line to dashed. Gradient? Do not know. Design? I like compact. Compact is nice and easy for my fat fingers. Because if you click anywhere on the screen, it will automatically do it. Even just like down there, it will... It will change the slider, whereas if you choose this one... Oh, no, it's actually the same. Sorry, my mistake. But compact is nice. Alright, snap. Whoop. Uh, yeah, I... Spring, whoop. It springs back to where it is. I forgot what snap is, I'm sorry. I don't know what snap is. But spring gets sprung back down to the default value. So this is where the values come in handy. So if I go def if I do default, uh, you have to define the range first. So let's use MIDI 127. So if I say the default is like 63, which is around the center. So if I move it, it springs back to the middle. See? 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 Yes, it's very useful. So, without spring, it's now normal. Double tap is very useful here. So, if you have a, like the master fader, for example, and you're like, oh, I'm going to change it down here. Actually, I want it back to the original double tap, and it goes back to the original spot it was in. Yay. All right. That seems to be all good. Ooh, sensitivity just ramps up the the speed of that. Sensitivity when it's in point zero it means you have to work harder to move it up and down. And yeah, obviously the more sensitive it is, it means you don't have to use as much effort to slide it up and down. Great. So now the same thing with the fader. Literally, let's do control, the bracket, uh, I'll bring this in just in case, but I'm cl clicking that one, I think it's a bracket, bracket, channel 1, and 40, CC40, and remember, MIDI Abletron, so, MIDI map, let's do the volume, Aha! There we go. And now we have control over that fader. Yay. Now, let's see what happens when we convert this into, let's convert it into a button. And let's change the MIDI target to key key. So remember our friend Kiki. So now, because we have set the media devices to Kiki, it should receive information. Aha, it doesn't. Oh, wait. For some reason, the button's not working. The value, no, the button. Aha. Uh -huh. Double tap. Okay, let's turn that off. There we go! Check that out! It's very delicious! So let's, uh, let's make this into a tap. So that means we are tapping, and it only creates one value. Let's, let's, uh, Let's map something, like control, let's say save. Like, what happens, what happens if you want to save the project really easily? So how do you, how you do that is you double click on the value that you've just pressed. 
Then this box appears and it's like, hey, what do you want to do with this? You click in this blue box and you write control save. I mean, control S, which is save in Ableton. And you just write save, please. Save. Then this message will come up being like, hey, the action was saved successfully. Good work. So now this CC message, remember not to be confused with this one, because this one is, even though it's the same value, the same pre-arg, it's on the Ableton MIDI port, whereas this one is on the MIDI key key port, so it's only sending information to here. So even if I, um, I'll turn this off so it doesn't do anything, but even if I press this button, nothing's going to happen in Ableton. But you'll notice if I press start, oh, it's going to actually, I, oops, I can't actually do it without, because <laughs> if I, okay, I have to, sh it doesn't work in Ableton because it, like, it works in Ableton, but you need an iPad to do it separately. That's my own, the only thing. Because you can't press it within the box. Because if you press it within the box... Um, so, if I go here... If I press the box... It will save... In open stage con control. So, I'll be like... Able... Tron tutorial save see file saved so this MIDI key to key works everywhere not just in Ableton but everywhere but you do need like a separate device to press the button because the only way you can press the button is within open stage control so every time I press this button it's going to save in open stage control which is great thank you but yeah this is useful for when you've got an ipad and you connect it up um and utilize it in ableton which i'll do next time maybe maybe i'll do it next time anyway that's the end of the tutorial uh i feel like that was a very long time so i hope it was useful and i hope i didn't ramble on too much you know what i don't hope i think i did all right and i'm just starting out doing these tutorials and I'll take practice and I'll get better. But I hope this use this information was useful. And I'll put chapters down so it's a bit easier to work through the video. Alright. Catch ya. Catch ya. Catch ya. Catch ya.